Namaste and welcome back to the video course on watershed management. In module number 8 on st storm water and flood management in lecture number 33, today we will discuss about the flood routing. So, some of the important topics covered in today's lecture include flood routing through channels, reservoir routing, hydrologic routing, hydraulic routing, lumbered flow routing, Muskingum methods, St. Venance equations. So, some of the keywords for today's lecture flood routing, channel, reservoir, hydrologic and hydraulic routing. So, we were discussing about the flood problems say on a watershed basis we have seen what will be happening say with respect to uh, the rainfall runoff processes and then uh, with respect to channel flooding and then with respect to the, the overland flow conditions, urban flow flood management, urban uh, uh, drainage system, all these details we are discussing in this module in the last two lectures. So, in today's lecture we will be mainly focusing on the flood routing. So, let us first look into what is flood routing. So, as we discussed when we uh, look into a on a watershed basis, say watershed receives the rainfall as inputs and then uh, say through various hydrologic processes say this input of uh, rainfall is transformed into runoff. So, that is the output. So, that way as we discussed in some of earlier lectures, so we, we can uh, try to get the discharge or the, the flow depth at particular location with respect to time or the discharge versus time that is so called hydrograph uh, we can get. So, uh, as we can see that when this um, rainfall runoff process taking place and then uh, the, the runoff uh, uh, as outflow hydrograph will be coming from uh, various locations through various channels to a main channel or through various drains to a main channel and then uh, this will be uh, uh, say this uh, hydrographs or the, the flow will be merged and then uh, the, the flow depth will be increasing uh, uh, or the discharge will be increasing the uh, main channel uh, which we consider. So, as we can see as far as a watershed based uh, uh, say, uh, say the flow uh, routing is concerned, we can see that uh, the, the hydrograph differs in shape. Uh, duration and magnitude. So, as the fl flow is keep on coming from various locations and then uh, merging uh, to the main channel. Uh, so, there will be uh, the, uh, the, the shape and duration and uh, magnitude will be keep on changing. So, this attribute to the storage properties of watershed system. So, what is the storage properties within the watershed or what is the storage properties within a channel accordingly the things will be uh, changing. I mean the, the hydrograph uh, say the pattern will be changing, its peak will be changing or time to peak will be changing uh, or its shape will be changing. So, within this context let us look what is uh, flood routing or flow routing. So, flood routing or flow routing means it is a procedure to compute output hydrograph when input hydrograph and physical dimensions of the storage are known. Say for example, if you consider a, a, a river like this, so the flow will be keep coming from various locations through as overland flow or say as inflow uh, to a particular location and then uh, say we can see that um, this hydrograph uh, say if you consider any location with respect to time, the discharge versus time. We can see that this uh, the shape and other properties will be changing. So, uh, the fl flood routing or flow routing means uh, this is a procedure to compute say the output hydrograph at any location uh, uh, with respect to time uh, for the given uh, input hydrograph and then what will be the physical dimensions and storage properties of this uh, river channel or the overland flow or the watershed uh, so like that. So, flood routing uh, means it is a uh, the process of say what we are say we, we know what is the inflow coming and then uh, uh, say at various location at particular uh, location uh, we are identifying what will be the outflow I mean the discharge versus time the hydrograph we are identifying. So, this depends upon what will the inflow coming to the system uh, when we consider say uh, between two sections and then what will be the, 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 the channel properties or the storage properties uh, of the channel or the river or the watershed uh, which you are considering. So, this uh, procedure is so called a flood routing or flow routing. So, this uh, flood routing or flood routing is very important in many of the uh, hydraulic calculations since uh, when we are uh, going for uh, uh, 
uh, flood predictions, flood warning system, we have to calculate how, how this uh, outflow hydrograph at particular location with respect to given in, inflow hydrographs. And then also when we are going for design of various hydraulic structures, uh, we should know uh, this uh, outflow hydrograph. So, flood routing or flow routing is uh, very important uh, procedure in uh, hydraulics engineering. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, within the context of watershed management also, this is very important since we have to identify uh, how this outflow hydrograph will be changing uh, with respect to the storage system uh, between two stretches or two sections of a channel or a river uh, with respect to the inflow hydrograph. So, this uh, flood routing is used for uh, flood forecasting as I mentioned, it is a very important uh, we have to identify the uh, flood routing for to see how the flood will be taking place or flood forecasting. And then uh, design of spillways, if you consider a reservoir uh, or a uh, say hydraulic structure say like uh, while designing, uh, we, we should know how this uh, given for given inflow, how the out, outflow or flood routing is required. And then uh, also for various flood protection works, uh, we should know uh, say, say uh, how this uh, outflow hydrograph is changing or how what is the pattern. So, that way flood routing is uh, uh, very important uh, in uh, uh, watershed management uh, say uh, to identify uh, say uh, whether there will be any flooding problems or to to while designing various structures uh, in a river or in a channel. Uh, we need to uh, say identify how the flood is pro proceeding or we have to go for uh, flood routing. So, now let us look um, uh, what are the important motivations so for this flood routing. So, flood routing as we identify for the given inflow conditions say at particular so location we want to know how the outflow condition is taking place or output, uh, out, outflow hydrograph or output hydrograph. So, we should identify. So, why we should go for this as we have already seen uh, we, we say for various uh, uh, flood for conditions like flood forecasting or hydraulic uh, structure design we need. So, some of the important uh, motivations I have listed here say when we consider the floods. Uh, we should know uh, the, the we, say we have to predict the flood propagation. So, how the flood is uh, as you can see in these uh, photographs, how the flood is moving from one location to another location. So, that is so called um, flood propagation and then uh, if you want to get to take for some protection measures with respect to the flooding. So, we should know and then um, uh, say to go for flood warning. So, we should know how this uh, uh, the the flood movement or flow movement takes place. So, that process is the flood routing. So, flood routing is very important as far as the floods are concerned with respect to uh, prediction of floods or flood warning system or uh, to go for protection from the flooding uh, like that. And then it is very important uh, to uh, do flood routing to for the design of various structures like uh, water conveyance systems say like uh, uh, channels, canals or uh, what kind of conveyance system. Uh, we should know for, for the given inflows say how the outflow will be at particular locations. So, uh, water conveyance system design uh, then protective measures like um, if you are going to construct a flood protection uh, uh, say uh, embankments or the, the, the uh, protection walls then we should know how this uh, flood outflow, out, outflow hydrograph. So, that way flood routing is very important and then hydro system operations say while operating a, a reservoir system we should know uh, say we should go for reservoir routing and then we should know how the water level will be is going to rise uh, within the reservoir system. So, for the hydro system operation uh, we should uh, do this flood routing. Then third one is uh, the water dynamics. So, uh, say some of the, uh, uh, the many of the rivers will be engaged. So, we should know how the, the flow can uh, propagate or flood can propagate. So, for engaged rivers then peak flow estimations. So, many of the thing, times we should know uh, what will be the peak of uh, flow or the, the hydrograph uh, with respect to the given rainfall conditions or with respect to given releases 
uh, from a uh, reservoir. So, peak flow estimation is very important and also sometimes uh, when we deal with the uh, river aquifer interaction say whenever the, the water level rises in the river uh, say the flow will be taking place from the river to the aquifer system and when the, the, the water level recedes or going down uh, within the river system then the aquifer will be recharging to the river. So, to, for this kinds of calculation also uh, we should uh, uh, go for flood routing. So, that way flood routing is uh, very important uh, as far as uh, very, uh, say when we consider uh, various hydro hydrologic or hydraulic phenomena like uh, floods, design of various hydraulic structures, water dynamics uh, etcetera. So, now uh, let us see uh, say uh, when we discuss about flood routing say we can classify the flood routing into mainly into two one is the uh, reservoir routing uh, second one is the channel routing. So, uh, say as I mentioned uh, uh, say when uh, say as far as a reservoir when there is a dam and then there will be reservoir. So, the to the reservoir water will be uh, flow will be keep on coming in the, uh, the upstream sections uh, say from various channels and then we should know how the the, uh, the, uh, the uh, depth of flow is changing. Uh, so, that that is so called uh, reservoir routing and as far as channel or rivers or canals are concerned for the given inflow condition I say on the downstream sides we should identify how the uh, outflow or how the uh, discharge or the flow depth variations. So, that way uh, we can classify the flood routing into uh, reservoir routing and channel routing. So, as I already mentioned uh, reservoir routing considers modulation effects on a flood wave when it passes through a water reservoir uh, results in outflow hydrographs with uh, attenuated peaks and enlarged time basis. So, that way uh, say as far as a reservoir is concerned with respect to given inflow conditions how the flow depth variation taking place and uh, with respect to uh, the space and time that will be identifying through uh, reservoir routing. So, variations in res reservoir elevation and outflow can be predicted uh, with the time uh, when relationships between elevation and volume are known. So, as far as the reservoir is concerned we, we uh, if we know the, the at various uh, flow depth conditions what will be the volume uh, within the reservoir uh, then uh, we can easily identify say how, how much is the outflow, outflow or how much storage is there, how much is the possible outflow uh, from the reservoir system. So, that way uh, reservoir routing is very important and uh, the second one is channel routing. So, channel routing considers uh, changes in the shape of input hydrograph while flood waves pass through a channel uh, downstream. So, whatever inflow is taking place uh, from upstream side and then uh, there will be storages and then various changes taking place within the river or channel section. So, uh, channel routing uh, means uh, uh, we are considering say on the downstream side say what will be the hydrograph or what will be the uh, flow depth or what will be the discharge. So, flood hydrographs uh, at various sections predicted when input hydrographs and channel characteristics are known. So, here the reservoir characteristics or channel char characteristics are important uh, since um, uh, accordingly there will be some storage will be taking place within the reservoir or within the channel. Uh, so, that way uh, when doing when we go for reservoir routing or channel routing uh, we should know the channel characteristics and the uh, reservoir uh, characteristics for this kinds of uh, routing. So, that way we can classify the flood routing into reservoir routing and uh, channel routing. So, now when we consider uh, say flood routing, so uh, we have to systematically uh, say uh, consider the inflow and then the various uh, channel properties or reservoir properties and that way uh, flood routing uh, we have to go systematically. So, flood routing uh, methods uh, we can classify into uh, hydraulic uh, routing in which uh, generally both continuity and dynamic equations are considered. So, hydraulic routing means with respect to channel, with respect to uh, time and space how the flow depth or the how the discharge will be varying. So, generally we will be uh, solving the uh, continuity equation uh, which is based upon the conservation of mass and the dynamic equations um, so called uh, St. Venance equation generally uh, by considering the conservation of uh, momentum. Uh, so, and then uh, that is so with respect to the hydraulic routing with respect to channel or hydrologic uh, routing which generally uses the continuity equation alone. 
so that way the 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 flood routing can be hydrologic routing methods generally which we consider the consideration of mass or equation of continuity and then hydraulic routing methods generally uh, which we consider the uh, consideration of mass or continuity equation and the consideration of momentum or the so called uh, uh, the momentum equations which are uh, say we call as St. Venance equations. Uh, so, that way uh, we can uh, we have to systematically consider the system uh, within a control volume approach generally either with respect to the uh, continuity equation or the, the uh, continuity equation and the momentum equation. So, with respect to the, the uh, hydraulic routing or the, the hydrologic routing. Uh, so, as we mentioned, uh, so these kinds of routing is very important as far as flood forecasting, flood protection, reservoir design or design of spillway and uh, various outlet structures. So, that way uh, uh, say either hydrologic routing or hydraulic routing uh, we have to do as far as uh, while uh, uh, design and planning of um, uh, say various uh, say um, uh, structures or uh, through say when we go, go for watershed uh, management uh, uh, this, this routing either hydraulic routing or hydraulic routing are uh, essential. So, now uh, say uh, as flood routing when we consider so we have seen that we are trying to identify how the flow depth is varying or discharge is varying with respect to given uh, inflow conditions and the storage uh, conditions of the channel or the uh, reservoir. So, that way the flood routing uh, say as we discussed it is a technique of determining the flood hydrograph at a section of a river or a channel uh, by utilizing the data of flood flow at one or more uh, upstream sections. So, uh, you can see that here this is uh, the, the hydrograph discharge versus time. So, uh, if this is the, the, the inflow hydrograph coming and then uh, say you can see that due to attenuation and then various changes. So, this can be the, 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 the outflow hydrograph. Uh, so, similarly uh, say there can be storage taking place within the, the uh, river or the reservoir, then uh, you can see that um, say as far as the reservoir is concerned release from storage, then uh, accumulation storage. So, that way uh, we can identify with respect to the hydrograph. So, that way when we deal with the flood routing, uh, we can have two types of um, uh, flow routing or flood routing. One is lumbered flow routing and second one is the uh, distributed uh, flow routing. So, lumbered flow routing, so here flow is a function of time only. Uh, at particular location. So, the spatial aspects we are not considering, but with respect to time. Uh, so, that is uh, the lumbered flow routing and then distributed flow routing is concerned flow is a function of space and time throughout the system. So, that way we have to see the, the channel section uh, and then slope and various conditions whether it is um, uh, uh, channel routing or river routing uh, or as far as a reservoir is concerned we should know the, the aerial extent and then with respect to uh, the, the uh, uh, depth conditions how the volume changes. So, that way we should know that also. So, uh, that way uh, flood routing can be either lumbered flow routing uh, or flood routing can be lumbered flow routing or uh, distributed uh, flow routing. So, as I mentioned uh, when we deal with the lumbered flow routing, uh, so generally we will be uh, going for the, the solution of a continuity equation. Uh, so, uh, that we can express as uh, the rate of change of storage is equal to uh, inflow minus outflow or input minus output. So, here in, input or inflow is say as a function of time and then outflow or output is a function of again time. So, that inflow minus outflow that gives the change in storage. So, here S is the storage. So, uh, if you know the uh, inflow uh, then uh, the, uh, the unknowns uh, so are the, the outflow uh, and storage or Q and S. So, that way other than this continuity equation uh, like the change in storage is equal to inflow minus outflow. Uh, so, we should have some second relationship that as a storage function uh, this is needed to relate this um, uh, storage inflow and outflow. So, that way uh, we, we will be dealing with the uh, lumbered flow routing. Uh, so, specific form of storage functions uh, say like um, uh, 
uh, say when we deal with the the reservoir then reservoir capacity with respect to the 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 depth variation within the reservoir or with respect to channel how the uh, the uh, as a uh, either linear or non linear variations with respect to the the uh, storage function so that we we can get so specific form of storage function depending upon the nature of the system either a channel or um, uh, river or a or a reservoir uh, we have to get so that way the lumped flow routing is mainly based upon this uh, continuity uh, equation so lumped flow routing um, uh, some of the uh, methods as i mentioned one equation is the continuity equation um, and then uh, the other relationship which we need to identify how the the storage is take, uh, varying or how the uh, discharge or the outflow is varying. So, some of the important relationships which we can get is like um, level pool reservoir routing where uh, storage is a non-linear function of uh, the outflow only. So, like a storage say if you consider say for example, a reservoir a storage will be a function of the outflow. Uh, so, S is equal to F q and then uh, say for example, in channel routing uh, say in uh, say using Muskinga method which is one of the commonly used method. So, here uh, flow routing uh, in channels, so the storage we can relate linearly. So, linear relates uh, inflow to the outflow. So, there can be uh, inflow to outflow we can uh, say relate linearly. So, that is uh, say we, which we generally do in Muskinga method which we will be discussing in detail later. Uh, then also uh, say like other type of relationships like um, linear reservoir models where storage is a linear function of um, the outflow and uh, its time derivatives. Uh, then uh, the effect of storage so that way we can um, relate to or redistribute the hydrograph by shifting the centroid of the inflow hydrograph to the position of uh, that of the outflow hydrograph uh, in time. So, like that um, so depending upon the the uh, conditions or the, the non relationships. So, uh, in the lumped flow routing uh, the main equation is the consideration of mass or continuity equation which gives the change in storage is equal to uh, inflow minus out, outflow. Then as the second relationship uh, say where there are two unknowns one is the storage and second one is the outflow. So, uh, we should have two relationship one is the continuity equation. Uh, second is say like uh, the, the relationship which I mentioned like um, the level pool reservoir routing where storage is a function of the outflow. Then Muskinga method where uh, storage is linear related with respect to inflow and outflow and then linear reservoir models uh, where uh, the storage is a linear function of uh, outflow uh, and its time derivatives. So, like that we can connect and get another relationship and then uh, we can um, solve for the outflow uh, or, or the storage uh, depending upon the uh, condition. Uh, so, that way uh, this uh, lumped flow routing uh, we can uh, to consider uh, say in two methods. So, first method is case 1 we consider invariable relationship uh, between the storage and outflow S and Q. So, here there is uh, it is invariable relationship. So, like um, storage versus uh, outflow uh, Q versus S we can um, put like this and based upon that we can get a relationship second relationship. Storage and outflow are functions of water surface elevation when reservoir has a horizontal uh, water surface elevation. So, S can be written as a function of Q or combination of these two functions. So, then uh, we, as we can see the peak flow occurs at intersection of uh, inflow hydrograph and uh, outflow hydrograph. Uh, so, uh, uh, say if this is the outflow hydrograph, this is the inflow hydrograph. So, here uh, with respect to the peak flow we can identify peak outflow, this is peak outflow and we can identify and then uh, uh, here this case 1 we consider the invariable relationship between the storage and the uh, outflow. And the second case is where the we can have variable relationship between the storage and outflow. So, this applies to long narrow uh, reservoirs and open channels. So, depending upon the, the conditions whether the uh, channel is narrow and the reservoir is also narrow or long. So, there we can apply this uh, variable relationship between the storage and outflow. So, here the outflow is on the y, y axis storage is this x axis. So, then we can see that this is not considered as a single line as we consider uh, in the last slide, but here this will be uh, varying uh, uh, like this. So, there is a variable relationship. So, the water surface uh, profile is curved due to the backwater effects. So, there is a possibility of back water effects. 
So, that way the back uh, the water surface profile may be curved one uh, peak of flow occurs uh, later than point of uh, intersection. So, you can see that if this is the inflow then the peak flow you can see that that is a later stage um, than the point of intersection between inflow hydrograph and outflow hydrograph. So, this will be the uh, location of uh, peak outflow. So, replacement of uh, loop with a dashed line. So, as you mentioned uh, the outflow and storage it is a, a loop like this. So, we can consider the, we can replace this loop with respect to a dashed line uh, when backwater effect is not significant. So, that way also we can consider. So, in the case 2 uh, we consider the a variable relationship between storage and the outflow. So, that is about the, the lumbered uh, say uh, floor routing. So, now uh, we will be discussing in detail about the uh, reservoir routing uh, and the channel routing uh, with respect to some of the important techniques uh, which we generally use as far as the uh, flood routing or flow routing. So, now let us look into first into the reservoir routing. So, reservoir routing as we discussed it is a procedure for calculating the outflow hydrograph from a reservoir with a horizontal water surface. So, if this is a reservoir, so this is a procedure for calculating the outflow uh, hydrograph. So, flow of flood waves from river streams keeps on changing uh, the head uh, of water in the reservoir. Um, say, so, the head in the reservoir is a function of um, time. So, since flow is keep on coming in the upstream, uh, so that way uh, this is a function of time. And so, we, we are required to find variations of the storage, storage within the reservoir uh, outflow and this depth of uh, flow within the reservoir uh, or depth of the flow depth within the reservoir for given uh, inflow with the time. So, the problem uh, in the reservoir routing is that uh, we know the inflow what is coming to the reservoir, then um, uh, we know the, the reservoir characteristics. So, we have to uh, identify what will be the storage um, uh, uh, within the reservoir and then what is the outflow possible from the reservoir and then uh, say the, the depth of flow or the, the water depth available uh, within the uh, reservoir. So, if you consider a small time interval, so here again if you can use the continuity equation we can write um, the inflow into delta t minus outflow q into delta t is equal to change in uh, storage delta s uh, equation number 1. So, if you consider small time interval say, uh, say for example, few minutes um, uh, then we can write um, inflow into delta t minus uh, outflow into delta t is equal to uh, change in storage delta s. So, if you consider the as far as inflow is concerned, uh, if you consider uh, say an average with respect to time, so that we can write I 1 plus I 2 say if I 1 is the um, say the inflow at time T 1 and um, I 2 is the inflow at time T 2. Uh, so, if, if the delta T is T 2 minus T 1, then we can write I 1 plus I 2 divided by 2 into delta T. Uh, minus similarly the inf outflow is q1 at time t1 and uh, outflow is q2 at time t2 so q1 plus q2 divided by 2 into change in time delta t so that will be the change in storage s2 uh, minus s1 so this average inflow we consider here in time t and average outflow in time t and then the change in storage in in t so that way uh, we can rewrite uh, this e equation uh, when we go for uh, reservoir routing. So, now uh, when we deal with the reservoir routing uh, say uh, we should have some important data with respect to the, the various um, characteristics of the reservoir uh, and then uh, we should also know the inflow pattern uh, coming to the reservoir. So, accordingly only uh, we should be able to uh, say predict the outflow conditions or the storage variations. Uh, within the uh, reservoir. So, let us look some of the important uh, data required as far as reservoir routing. So, data like elevation versus storage. So, when the water level in the re reservoir rises, how much storage is available? So, elevation versus storage, then elevation, elevation versus outflow discharge and hence storage versus outflow discharge. Uh, so, uh, that data also needed then uh, we should know how much inflow is coming uh, coming to the reservoir. So, that we inflow inflow hydrograph should be known and then uh, we should also know initial values of inflow, 
initial values of output flow and then what is the initial storage s at time t is equal to 0. So, if the time starting time is t is equal to 0 then at that time uh, since this is a time dependent problem at that time what is the inflow, what is the outflow and what is the storage. So, based upon that only we will be going for the prediction as far as the next time step is uh, considered. So, here uh, as I mentioned uh, when we go for reservoir routing the time step delta t must be shorter than the time of transit of the flood wave. Uh, through the reach which we consider say in, you know within the reservoir reach. So, variety of methods say you can see as far as reservoir routing mainly based upon this continuity equation or variety of methods we can see in the literature. So, like um, Wendy Chow et al have given in the textbook. Uh, so, some of the two important methods which are generally used are uh, we, we will discuss briefly for reservoir routing one is the pulse methods and second one is the uh, good riches uh, method. So, these are two important methods which generally uh, use uh, as far as reservoir routing is concerned. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned what we are trying to do, so we know the inflow, uh, we want to identify how is the outflow or then uh, storage with respect to time. So, that is what we are trying to solve uh, in uh, reservoir routing. So, now let us look into these two methods pulse method and the uh, good riches method. So, now uh, in a uh, reservoir routing using pulse methods. So, here now we have earlier seen the, the continuity equation as given here. So, this equation number 2 uh, we will be rewriting uh, as, as like this i 1 plus i 2 by 2 into delta t plus s 1 minus q 1 into delta t divided by 2 is equal to s 2 plus q 2 into delta t and divided by 2. So, here we can see that if you consider this equation which is obtained from equation 2 which is the continuity equation, here all terms on the left hand side are known uh, at the starting of the routing. So, all these terms are known. So, what are the unknowns are this s 2 and q 2. So, right hand side is a function of elevation uh, h for a, a chosen time interval delta t. So, now uh, we can prepare graphs say which can give uh, say the 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 uh, h that means the uh, uh, flow depth or the the, the depth of uh, water in the reservoir versus the outflow h versus q and h versus storage and then uh, we can also get h versus s plus q into uh, delta t by 2. Uh, so, this way uh, we can prepare graphs with respect to various given conditions and then uh, from that we can try to get this the, the for the given time uh, with respect to the given um, time we can identify what is the possible storage and then uh, with respect to the, the uh, um, given time we can also identify how much is the outflow uh, which can take place. So, this procedure is repeated for full uh, inflow hydrograph. So, uh, we can uh, accordingly we can prepare curves and then based upon that curves we can easily identify for the given inflow what is the possible outflow and then what will be the possible uh, storage. So, through these uh, graphs like h versus q, h versus s and h versus s plus q you know delta t uh, by 2. So, this is so called a uh, pulse method. Then the second method is so called a Goodrich method. So, here again the, the, the continuity equation equation number uh, 2 uh, this equation uh, we will be rewriting in another form uh, here in Goodrich method. So, here i 1 plus i 2 plus 2 s 1 by delta t minus q 1 is equal to 2 s 2 by delta t plus q 2. So, where i 1 i 2 uh, are the inflows uh, with respect to time t 1 and t 2 and s 1, s 2 are the, the storage with respect to time t 1 and t 2 and q 1, q 2 are the, the outflow uh, uh, with respect to time t 1 and t 2. So, now we prepare graphs for h versus q uh, and h versus s and h versus 2 s delta t uh, by uh, plus q. So, as in the previous step here we prepare graphs h versus q, h versus s and h versus uh, uh, 2s delta t plus q. So, flow routing through time interval delta t all terms on the left hand side and hence uh, so we left hand side is known from that uh, we can uh, get for what is there for the right hand side. So, value of outflow uh, q for uh, say with respect to 2s delta t by q can be read from the graph. So, we can prepare the graph from that uh, say for this 
2 s by delta t plus q for the uh, value of outflow uh, say uh, we can the outflow can be obtained. So, value of 2 s plus delta t uh, uh, minus q uh, is calculated by uh, uh, so I mean for the next time step this term we calculate uh, by means of uh, say 2 s delta by delta t plus q we will deduct 2 times uh, q uh, for next time interval. Uh, so, that uh, this again we for the next time interval this is repeated the procedure repeated. So, we will get the left hand side and based upon that we can obtain the right hand side from these graphs. So, repetition of the computations for subsequent routing periods we can continue and then we can identify what will be the storage uh, or the what will be the uh, outflow uh, for the given uh, inflow conditions. So, this is so called a uh, good riches uh, good rich uh, method. So, that way uh, when we deal with the Muskinga when we deal with the, the reservoir routing two important methods one is pulse method and the second one is the good rich method. So, this is mainly we prepare graphs for various conditions and from that uh, we can identify what will be the uh, the the outflow conditions or the 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 storage possibilities. So that is about the the reservoir routing. So there are number of other techniques available in literature, but uh, we said due to lack of time, we will not be going through all these techniques. So here we considered only uh, two techniques with respect to pulse method and the Kutrich method. So now we'll discuss the channel routing. Uh, so, channel routing is concerned uh, we will be discussing one lumbered approach and then another one is the, the, the distributed approach so called uh, a solution of say invariant equations. So, first let us look into the Muskinga method which is again a lumbered approach. So, here as you can see the hydrologic routing uh, method. So, this is a hydrologic routing method for handling uh, variable discharge uh, or discharge and storage relationship. Uh, so, that is the essence of uh, the Muskinga method. So, this is a hydrologic routing. Uh, so, based upon the, the continuity equation. So, storage here is a function of both outflow and inflow discharges. So, as we, we have seen for reservoir routing. So, this is mainly for channel routing. So, here again uh, the outflow is a function of uh, um, uh, say or storage is a function of outflow and inflow characteristic or inflow discharges. So, water surface in a channel which is not only parallel to the channel bottom, but also uh, varies uh, with the time. So, based upon these assumptions uh, say model storage in a channel is a combination of uh, wedge and prism. So, as you can see in, in this figure the bottom one we consider as a prism and then above that there is a wedge. So, this is uh, say with respect to the, the uniform flow condition is a prism storage and then above this is a wet storage. So, which will be with the flow depth will be keep on changing. So, this is the uh, wet storage. Uh, so, this um, model storage we consider as wet and prism storage. So, prism storage um, is, a, is the volume that would exist if uniform flow occurred at the uh, downstream depth as I mentioned here. And the wedge storage, uh, wedge is like volume formed between actual water surface profile and top surface of the prism storage. So, this wedge storage is due to the change in depth between two reaches. Uh, uh, so, prism storage is with respect to the uniform uh, uh, flow uh, conditions. So, this is the inflow to the channel. So, here is outflow to, from the channel and here we consider two section. So, this is the prism storage and this one is the uh, wedge storage. So, now uh, in Muskinga method, so uh, we consider uh, say this continuity equation uh, say with respect to the change in storage. So, during the advance of flood wave inflow exceeds uh, outflow. Uh, so, uh, whenever the flood is advancing, so uh, the inflow will be more, so inflow will be exceeding the outflow. So, we say that the, uh, there is a positive wedge. During the recession when flow is uh, say the depth is reducing uh, say uh, with respect to inflow and then uh, during recession outflow exceeds inflow. So, there is a negative wedge. So, uh, and also some of the assumptions like a cross section area of the uh, flood uh, flow section is directly proportional to the uh, discharge at the section. So, based upon this assumption only this Muskinga method is working. Uh, so, uh, that way uh, when we consider this assumption and we can put volume of prism storage is equal to uh, k into uh, o where here o is the outflow. Uh, so, volume of the, the wet storage is equal to k into x into uh, 
uh, I minus O, where I is the inflow, O is the outflow, uh, and K is the is a proportionality coefficient uh, depending upon the ch the channel characteristics. Uh, uh, and then x is a uh, weighting factor generally that varies from uh, 0 to uh, 0.5. So, here this is the channel inflow and uh, this is the outflow and uh, say prism storage uh, we can consider the as this uh, the proportionality coefficient k multi uh, multiplied by the outflow k into O and then uh, wedge storage is k into x into i minus O, where uh, x is a uh, weighting factor which varies from 0 to uh, 0.5. So, these details and their details are given in this test book by Chow and others of 1988. So, then uh, say we can write the total storage with respect to the wedge storage and prism storage. Total storage is equal to uh, S is equal to k into x i plus uh, 1 minus x into o. So, this equation is called a Muskingam uh, storage equation. Uh, so, now here we consider a linear model for routing uh, flow in the streams. So, that way the value of x depends upon the shape of um, uh, model wedge storage. So, x is equal to 0 for uh, level pool storage. So, that we have to consider only s is equal to k into o and x is equal to 0.5. Uh, for a full wedge. So, that way uh, we can uh, consider uh, say with respect to say the last figure like this. So, now so as I mentioned here k is the time of travel of actually k is the time of travel of flood wave uh, through channel reaches and uh, values of storage at time uh, say if we consider j and j plus 1 uh, we can rewrite uh, this Moskingam equation as follows. Uh, S j S subscript j is equal to k into uh, x uh, into i j i subscript j plus 1 minus x into o of subscript j and S at j plus 1 time um, we can write k into x uh, i j plus 1 plus 1 minus x into o j plus 1. So, at two, ti two time intervals j and j plus 1 we can rewrite the Moskingam equation uh, in this fashion. So, now the storage change in storage between these two time steps will be the difference between this j plus 1 and j th time, time step. So, s j plus 1 minus s j is equal to k into uh, x into i j plus 1 minus i j plus 1 minus x into o j plus 1 minus uh, o j. So, this is the uh, change in storage when we consider the, the Muskingam uh, method. So, now uh, we have considered earlier the, the continuity equation. Uh, so, continuity equation is inflow minus outflow is equal to change in storage. So, that we can write uh, with respect to j th and j plus 1 time step we can write i j plus uh, j, i j plus 1 divided by 2 into delta t minus o j plus o into uh, o j plus 1 divided by 2 into delta t is equal to s j plus 1 minus s j. So, we can equate this equation. Uh, and then uh, we can equate with respect to this continuity equation. So, we when we equate these two equations, uh, we, we say we finally get the equation like this. So, now this is our final equation as far as Moskingam channel routing method is concerned. So, this we can simplify as O j plus 1 is equal to C 1 into i j plus 1 plus C 2 uh, i j plus C 3 O j. So, this is the Moskingam routing equation. So, where this uh, the this C 1 is equal to 0 0.5 delta t minus k x divided by uh, k into 1 minus x uh, plus 0 0.5 delta t and then C 2 is equal to 0 0.5 delta t plus k into x divided by k into 1 minus x plus 0 0.5 delta t and C 3 is equal to k into 1 minus x minus 0 0.5 delta t divided by k into 1 minus x plus 0.5 delta t and this C 1, C 2, C 3 coefficients. So, summation of this should be equal to 1. Uh, C 1 plus C 2 plus C 3 equal to 1 as explained in the test book of Chow and others. Uh, so, that way uh, we can derive this Muskingam uh, routing equation. So, uh, here uh, say when we consider the time step in Muskingam method it should be uh, such a way that uh, delta t should be chosen such a way that k uh, should be greater than t should be greater than 2 times k x for best results. So, through various uh, case studies this was shown. And if delta t is less than 2 k x, then coefficient c 1 will become negative. So, that way some restrictions of the methodology are there. 
So, now uh, this Muskinga method is Muskinga routing method is one of the commonly used uh, routing method as far as channels routing or river routing is concerned. So, some of the important uh, data required as far as the Muskingum routing method is concerned like uh, inflow hydrograph through a channel reach uh, that should be known then values of k and x for the reach. So, this uh, k the coefficient k and x we can determine through uh, either some empirical relationships or through a trail and approach especially x. Uh, so, that way we can determine. So, these values should be known uh, for the ch given channel reach. Then value of the outflow oj from the reach at the uh, at the starting time. So, based upon that, that only we proceed for o, for uh, outflow at j plus 1 time step. So, for a given channel reach k and x are taken uh, as constants and then k is determined empirically. So, as far as, as I mentioned this k we can determine empirically like Clark's method where it is uh, defined as k is equal to c into l divided by s to the power 0 0.5 where c is a constant l is the length of stream and s is uh, mean slip slope of the channel uh, or this also k can be also determined for given uh, inflow outflow condition we can do the, the, the plot a graph and from that graph also and we can determine uh, this k. And generally x is determined by trail and error uh, procedure for the given channel reach. So, that way once we know k and x and then systematically with respect to inflow and uh, uh, say at the initial time step the outflow is known for the other time steps uh, we can find the, this, the outflow and the storage using the uh, Muskinga method. So, this method is one of the commonly used method for channel routing and uh, the systematic procedure is there. So, the routing procedure uh, here I have put in this slide. So, knowing uh, k and x this coefficients uh, we can select an appropriate value of delta t. So, the time step we can choose then we can calculate c 1, c 2 and c 3. So, like here this c 1, c 2, c 3 using k x delta t we can identify what will be c 1, c 2 and c 3. Then starting from the initial conditions uh, non inflow outflow we can calculate the outflow for the uh, next time step. So, we can repeat the calculation for the entire in, uh, inflow hydrograph. So, that way with respect to time we can identify how, how the outflow hydrograph will be varying. So, that way we can do the uh, flood routing using the Muskinga method. So, you can see that this is also uh, a lumbered approach as far as ch channel routing is concerned. So, now uh, before closing today's lecture, we will discuss the flood routing say uh, flood routing as I mentioned it can be a distributed approach or lumped approach. So, we have already seen the lumped approach um, for uh, reservoir based upon the continuity equation and then uh, the lumped approach for the channel routing or river routing we have seen the Muskinga methods. Uh, so, these are all uh, say we are not concerned with spatial variations. So, these are also called a uh, lumped approach. So, now uh, say in the distributed approach, so we have to generally solve the, the, the governing equations say it, it is based upon the physics of the problem. So, we have to uh, say obtain the governing equations. So, uh, either one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensions depending upon the, the conditions. So, generally say river routing or channel routing is concerned most of the time we rely upon one dimensional modeling. So, uh, we will be having the, the, the continuity equation, uh, one continuity equation and one momentum equation. So, based upon that uh, say for the given uh, channel conditions non characteristics of the channel or river uh, and the inflow condition we can identify how the uh, flow depth or the, how the discharge is varying with respect to space and time. So, this is the essence of uh, flood routing in the distributed approach. So, generally we use so called St. Venance equations then regarding St. Venance equations we have discussed earlier in some of the uh, lectures earlier. Uh, so, this is uh, as I mentioned this is a physically based uh, uh, theory of flood propagation. So, from the St. Venance equations say for gradually varying. Uh, so, this is generally used for gradually varying flow in open channels. Uh, so, uh, this is so called the hydraulic routing method. So, here you can see that if this is the watershed which we consider. So, what we do? So, we know the inflow coming through these channels and then from various um, uh, the sub watersheds or from various uh, uh, say drainage systems or the, uh, the, the small small streams like this, what will be the flow coming inflow coming to the to the main channel this here in this figure this is the main channel. So, uh, 
so this inflow we know at various locations. So, our the main question is what will be the, the, the outflow or the, the flood hydrograph or the discharge versus time uh, at particular location like here at this location or at the outlet of the watershed. So, generally for this kinds of problem we consider flow as one dimension flow and then the assumption is gradually varied flow condition. Uh, so, generally uh, uh, say uh, we, the, the, uh, we consider the hydrostatic pressure distribution condition and also uh, we consider the, the, uh, the, the flow is as incompressible. Uh, uh, like that some of the important assumptions. So, here the we consider the concentration of mass, the continuity equation and the concentration of momentum and the dynamic wave equation. So, that is so called the St. Venus equations. So, these equations we have already discussed earlier. So, the governing equation for flood uh, flow routing or flood routing is the equation of uh, continuity given as del q by del x plus del a by del t minus q is equal to 0, where q is the, uh, the discharge uh, at any location uh, and um, uh, a is the, the cross section of the flow and then uh, t is time x is the distance and small q is the, the inflow coming from say either from overland uh, say uh, or the, the lateral inflow coming to the channel. Then the second equation is so called momentum equation. So, momentum equation is del q by del t plus del a by del x uh, of q square by a is equal to g into a into s 0 minus s f minus g into a into del h by del x. So, h is the flow depth and uh, a is the flow say, cross section area, g is the acceleration due to gravity, s 0 is the bed slope of the channel, s f is the energy slope. So, this energy slope which we generally you, you find using the minus equation. Uh, so, that way we have to say in one dimension we have to solve these two equations, so that we can identify what is the discharge or the what is the, the flow variation uh, with respect to space and time. So, that way this is a distributed model. So, uh, this uh, dynamic, so whatever the equation which we consider here these are so called dynamic wave equations or the full form of the St. Venance equations. So, there in literature we can see two kinds of approximations, one is so called diffusion wave approximation and second one is so called um, kinematic wave approximation. In both of these approximations the continuity equation is same, so the same continuity equation is used and in diffusion wave approach, so here the dynamic uh, momentum equation we consider only like this where del h by del x is equal to s 0 minus s f, where s 0 is the bed slope, s f is the energy slope which we can uh, identify by using the Manning's equation. So, uh, so to, to solve this system, uh, so uh, the diffusion equation appropriate initial and boundary conditions to be applied and then kinematic waveform is further uh, sim simplification of this model, the, the continuity equation is same equation, but here uh, say if the slope is not drastically varying, we can write S 0 is equal to S f or energy slope is equal to bed slope. So, we in kinematic waveform we will be solving the continuity equation and this uh, we will be putting the energy slope is equal to the, the bed slope. So, this is one simplified form. So, that way uh, we can either solve the dynamic waveform or the diffusion waveform or the, the kinematic waveform depending upon the requirement or depending upon the problem with appropriate initial conditions uh, like uh, what will be the initial flow depth or the, the, the um, uh, uh, discharge and then boundary conditions what will the or the, the upstream boundary what will be the condition or in, um, uh, downstream boundary what will be the condition. So, accordingly with respect to this governing equations, initial conditions and the boundary conditions uh, we can solve the system of equations. So, that we can do the flood routing or flow routing. So, that the out, output will be uh, say we know the, the discharge or flow depth uh, for the given conditions at any location of the river or the channel. So, as we discussed earlier as far as solution is concerned for this uh, given equations uh, say in the distributed model or the St. Venance equation, uh, they say uh, generally either we can go for analytical methods or computational method. So, as I mentioned earlier uh, this say analytical methods very difficult to get only for simplified given equations, uh, boundary conditions uh, and geometry we can have some very simple analytical solutions, but that is not applicable for most of the field problem. So, that way uh, these equations either in dynamic waveform or the diffusion waveform or kinematic waveform we have to solve using the uh, 
uh, numerical techniques. So, here in computational uh, methods uh, solution is obtained with the help of some approximate methods using a computer. So, you commonly used numerical te techniques like finite difference method, finite element method or finite volume method are used to obtain the solution in the computational method. So, this we have already discussed earlier. So, we are not going to details. Uh, so, say for example, in finite element method if you want to solve this diffusion wave form of the equation, uh, we can consider the channel to be uh, say constituted of number of linear line elements and then we can consider the, the element properties and then say for example, using Galerkin approach and we can approximate this continuity equation and the final form of the, the equation by considering the an implicit um, uh, form, uh, uh, form for the, the uh, time variation. Uh, uh, the final form of the equation can be written like this. So, here uh, in the finite element formulation. So, for the given condition uh, say we can solve this uh, boundary condition, we can solve this system of equations to get the unknowns of flow depth or the discharge at the given condition. So, that way we can go for. So, uh, we have developed over some uh, flood routing model for as far as channels are concerned with respect to the overland flow and then and say for example, tidal boundary conditions uh, on urban watershed basis. So, uh, this kinds of uh, flood routing or flood routing the essence is uh, the inflow conditions are known from lateral uh, flow or the beginning of the channel and then we want to identify how the uh, uh, flood or the outflow is taking place. So, output will be in terms of discharge or the, the depth of flow. So, before closing uh, today's lecture, we will just briefly go through one case study. The case study is um, uh, a catchment called Kalambali watershed, uh, uh, urban watershed in Nami Mumbai near Mumbai. So, this is the, the, the watershed. Uh, so, there is a main channel through which the drainage is taking place. So, the question here is how the flood routing is to be done through this channel. Uh, so, the catchment area is about 8.47 square kilometer, elevation varies from 0 0.5 meter to 227 meter above the MSL. So, here this uh, through this channel the, the flow is reaching to the creek or the sea. Uh, so, here uh, we consider say Lambert model approach as far as the overland flow by considering uh, the continuity equation. So, we consider about 31 sub catchments to get the overland flow coming to these channels at various locations. And le length of the channel is about uh, 5.271 kilometer and here we use the uh, finite element method as we discussed earlier. So, about 80 channel elements as shown here is taken and here the tidal boundary condition is there at this location which varies from 3.25 meter to minus 1 meter depending upon the, the, the spring tidal or neap tidal or the tidal variation, daily tidal variation uh, at this outlet of the channel. So, here uh, we used the an indirect approach of remote sensing GIS. So, we prepared the detailed elevation map, then slope map and then land use land cover map as shown in this figure. Figures. Then uh, say so this is a rainfall which we simulated this uh, the, to identify the flood routing. So, for 26 uh, July 2005, uh, the rainfall was about 670 mm uh, for a duration of 12 hours, uh, 675 mm. Uh, so, uh, uh, say using the model which we developed, so we routed this flow. So, at various locations of the channel like uh, node number 18 here, node number 33 here, node number 48, node number 63, node number 80. So, like that the time versus sta stage of flow is or the hydrograph is shown here. So, the, from this we can identify how the flooding is taking place. You can see that say for example, for this problem some location here there is uh, some flooding, uh, flood depth is shown with respect to the bank elevation. So, then again this for this area uh, the model was run again for another uh, rainfall of 15th July 2009. So, the rainfall pattern is shown here and then uh, uh, the channel uh, the, the stage variation with respect to the change from beginning to the creek end is shown here. So, you can see that uh, and this is the channel bank level. So, there is no flooding. And here we did some measurement uh, with respect to the, the flow depth with respect to time. Uh, so, that is we, we have compared our model results with observed and simulated. So, that way uh, what I want to say here is this flood the flow, flow routing or flood routing is very important uh, in the, the, the flood assessments or flood control uh, warning systems uh, for urban watershed or, or agricultural watershed. So, that way flood routing is uh, very important. So, some of the important references aspect is Chow and others uh, applied hydrology which is some of these aspects are used in, in today's lecture. 
Uh, so, before closing uh, today's lecture, some of the questions like a tutorial question, study the various uh, flood routing methodologies, details and suggest applications of each. Uh, then what are the software available for flood routing? So, for example, HEC, HMS, HEC, RES, all these details are available in this website. Evaluate the application for various problems such as reservoir routing or the channel routing. So, then a few self evaluation questions, uh, what is flood routing and where it is used? explain reservoir routing, uh, differentiate between pulse method and Goodrich method, uh, describe the Muskinga method of flood routing, uh, describe the prism storage and wet storage in a channel, uh, what are the input data required for uh, Muskinga routing. And then uh, so few assignment questions, what are the motivations for flood routing, uh, describe the different types and advantages of flood routing, uh, illustrate the channel routing procedure, uh, describe the lumped flow routing discuss physically based flood routing in channels by using the chain evidence equation. All these questions you can answer by going through today's lecture. So, today what we are discussing um, was about the uh, flow routing or flood routing uh, in channels and reservoirs and uh, say on a watershed basis also. So, flood routing is uh, or flood routing is very important uh, same in the uh, watershed management. Thank you.